hologram is a fascinating thing. Even more than 70 years after its invention, holography still seems like pure magic. A flat piece of holographic film like this can store everything that we can see in a scene, viewed from every possible perspective we can look at it. It records the so-called wave light field of a scene. If we look at such a recorded hologram, the same flat piece of film literally becomes a window to the previously recorded scene. We can turn it and watch it from every perspective and the objects are replayed with incredible detail and realism, exactly like we would see them if we would directly look at the original scene itself. What if holograms become windows to scenes and objects that we as humans can actually not directly look at and which are normally hidden from our direct view? Can we use holograms to see the unseen? When I was a kid, my family and I spent every summer vacation at a small lake in the Austrian Alps. In the last 15 minutes of our five-hour drive, we always had to drive up a steep mountain pass on a long and winding road until we finally arrived at the lake. As a kid, driving on this winding road in the backseat of our car always meant one thing and only one thing to me. It meant, now it's time to put your swim shorts on. <laughs> However, now approximately 25 years later, I'm a professor working on computational imaging techniques and devices, and driving up or down mountains on these curvy streets is actually not so exciting for me anymore. Just imagine you are driving down a mountain on a tight and curvy street. You are an experienced driver, but let's say on this day, the conditions are not easy to handle. It's dark, it's foggy, it just started raining. It's dangerous. You take the first few curves with very great caution, and let's say after a while, the fog clears up a little bit, and you can even increase the speed a little bit. Time to take the next curve. But then suddenly your car hits the brake. What happened, you ask yourself, because you cannot see any obstacle. After you completed the curve with very low speed, then you finally see it. A very large deer directly behind the curve, basically blocking the whole road. What just happened is that a camera, which is built in your car, was able to look around the corner. The camera detected the obstacle and told the car to hit the brakes. This camera might just have saved your life. What sounds like a device straight out of a science fiction movie might actually soon become reality and today I'm going to share with you our latest research findings in this direction and I show you our prototype version of a holographic camera which can look around corners and through scattering media already today. This camera can see the unseen. But how is that even possible? How can such a camera see what we as humans can actually not see. And in order to understand that, we first have to take a step back and learn how the human vision system works. And eventually we will revisit why we as humans can actually not look around corners and why we need such a fancy camera for that. So, how do we see objects? In most cases we see them because they are illuminated by a light source like the sun. From each point on the object surface, a light wave is then scattered in all directions and a small fraction of that light wave enters our eye, where it's focused again to one single point on our retina, which is our human camera sensor. This basically happens for all points in the scene and finally an image of the object forms on the retina. Such an image of an object point can also form if light is reflected off a mirror. This is something that we all experience every day, in the morning, for example, when we brush our teeth. So, if we now assume an obstacle here that blocks the direct line of sight between our camera and the object, the question is actually, can we use mirrors to look around corners? And the answer is, yes, of course. 
And in fact, we do that every day on multiple occasions. So, does this mean we are basically done here? Is this the shortest TEDx talk ever? And the answer is, of course, no, of course not. Not as long as we cannot plant a mirror on every corner on the planet. And in a certain sense, this is exactly what we are doing, because instead of relying on smooth and mirror-like surfaces to reflect the light around the corner, the technique and device that I introduce you today can use light which is diffusely scattered of objects with rough surfaces, like walls, for example. Or in other words, the technique turns walls into mirrors. And this is something that the human vision system or any normally operating camera, like the one in your smartphone, for example, can actually not do. Because if we replace the mirror with a rough wall, then the light waves undergo an additional scattering process and are spread from every point on the wall in every direction. The wavefronts that hit the eye are completely scrambled and a clear image cannot be formed anymore. We see something like this, which obviously does not much resemble a deer. Surprisingly, the same thing happens if light passes through a so-called scattering medium, something like fog or human tissue, for example. Again, all light waves are completely scrambled, and we basically get the same undefined structure on our retina. And here I even brought a small experiment that all of you can perform together with me right now. So please take out your mobile phones now and enable the flashlight on your mobile phone. And then put your finger on top of the LED. So, what you see is that your finger is glowing in a very nice orange, right? So obviously there is some light coming from the flashlight through your finger. However, if you look very closely, you realize that you cannot see any bone structure inside your finger, right? It actually looks like your finger does not have any bone in the middle at all. And this is because the structure or the shadow of the bone is already completely scattered out by the time that the light reaches the surface of the finger and the structure and the shadow is already completely lost by scattering. So this experiment is actually a very good example what happens if light passes through a scattering medium. And in this case, the scattering medium is the human tissue. Let's try something else. Take your phones, hold it towards me, put it high in the air, and slowly start waving it. Keep waving, keep waving, keep waving. Great. I always wanted to see how this looks like on stage. Thank you very much. You can now put your phones away. So let's get serious again. Yeah. So going back to the slide, we see that two problems which seem to be completely unrelated at the first glance, namely the problem of imaging around corners and the problem of imaging through scattering media, these two problems can be reduced to the exact same physical effect, namely random scattering of light waves. A camera which can compensate this effect allows for a multitude of potential future applications. Not only in our future cars helping us to detect obstacles around corners, but also in machine inspection, for example, helping us to detect defects in very narrow spaces, and especially in medicine, to non-invasively look inside the human body and potentially even through the human skull. To work around this problem of scattering, people came up with the idea pretty quickly that they should image those scattering scenes at longer wavelengths. So this means either with larger electromagnetic waves, like um, radar waves, for example, or with so-called time-of-flight cameras, which basically periodically modulate the intensity of a light source and then form a wavefront like that. And this actually works pretty well because longer wavelengths are less sensitive to scattering, which is good, but at the same time, they can only deliver very limited resolution. So you could see the silhouette of larger objects, for example, without any problems, 
but you cannot resolve those tiny blood vessels under your skin. Shorter wavelengths on the other side, like optical waves, they would deliver higher resolution, but we have already seen before that scattering makes a clear image formation impossible in this case. So, obviously, as in many situations in life, the best solution lies somewhere in the middle. The problem is that we cannot just take the method here from the left side and from the right side and just make their wavelengths a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. And this is because high resolution detector technology is not readily available for these intermediate wavelengths. So what we do is we apply a hack. We use optical waves, which can be detected with standard detector technology, like the one in your smartphone, for example. But we acquire two of them at very closely spaced wavelengths and mix them together. What happens is something that you may have learned in school with sound waves. What happens is that an envelope in the form of a so-called beat wave is forming, and then by some computational tricks we can actually isolate this beat wave. We call this beat wave the synthetic wave because it's invisible to the human eye, but we can work with it in our computer. The cool thing is that we can freely control the synthetic wave over our two lasers here, so this means that we can basically pick the size of the synthetic wavelengths exactly how we need it. Another fascinating thing about the synthetic wave is that it largely behaves like any physically present wave in the electromagnetic spectrum that we already know. And this means that we can play all tricks in our computer with the synthetic wave that we would normally play with light waves, radar waves, microwaves, and so on. And holography is one of these tricks. So here's how we use holography with the synthetic wave to look around corners. So let's say we want to image this hidden N-shaped object here around the corner. As you notice, the camera cannot directly see the object because the direct line of sight is blocked. So what we do is we shine light at the two wavelengths towards the wall. The light is scattered in all directions and a small fraction of that light actually reaches the surface of the object. From there, again, the light is scattered in all directions and a small fraction reaches an area on the wall. This area is where the magic happens, because from the remote position of our camera, we now look at this area on the wall, and we record a hologram of the hidden scene at the synthetic wavelengths that we store in our computer. This synthetic wavelengths hologram is actually very similar to the kind of holograms that I showed you before, but now the structures in this hologram are painted with the synthetic wave and not with the optical wave. And this makes the synthetic wavelengths hologram insensitive to scattering. Remember what I told you before about the beauty of holograms, that they are like windows to other scenes because they have stored the entire wavelight field of a scene? Well, our synthetic wavelengths hologram becomes now a window for us to the scene behind the corner or behind a scattering medium that would be normally invisible to us. And what we can do now is we can look at the objects in this scene by virtually replaying the synthetic wavelengths hologram in our computer. So, how does this mysterious scene around the corner look like? And what I show you now are very early stage research results and these results consist of images that have been taken around the corner, in this case from this very small cutout letter N here. And the exciting thing about this is how small the structures of this letter really are. So only 15 times 20 millimeters, people sitting in the last row might not even actually see that. But nevertheless, our camera can image the object with great detail and resolution. And as the synthetic wavelength is tunable and can be basically picked exactly how we need it, we can do this measurement at as many synthetic wavelengths as we want. And we also see here what we have just learned, namely that the resolution gets better with smaller wavelengths. And as I told you before, we can do the same thing to image through scattering media. So now we took this small cutout letter U here and we imaged it first through a so-called diffuser, 
and later we imaged it through a milky white plastic plate, which is basically comparable to these white cutting boards where you cut your onions on. And this image here actually gives you a feeling for the strength of scattering that happens when light passes through these two scatterers. So you see, for example, for the white uh, plastic plate that the black and white structures of this checkerboard pattern behind the plastic plate are already completely scattered out. You cannot see them anymore. But nevertheless, using our synthetic wave, we can image this object very nicely through the two scatterers. On the top, we see the images that we have taken through the diffuser for different synthetic wavelengths. And on the bottom, we see the images taken through the plastic plate, also for different synthetic wavelengths. And here on the top right, for this measurement, we even achieved sub-millimeter resolution. So this means that when imaging through a scatterer, we have shown experimentally that we can resolve structures which are thinner than a credit card. Yeah, and credit is actually the right word to end my talk for today, because now I would like to give credit to all the great colleagues and students who have contributed to this project and who accompanied me on this incredible journey. In the future, and after some further research that needs to be done, we hope that our holographic camera will be part of a new wave of imaging principles which will make the world a safer and healthier place so that in the end we have more time for the fun things in life. Thank you very much. <laughs>